friends, my name is Tushar and today I'm going to talk about Bellman Ford single source shortest path algorithm. So we are given a directed graph with the weights on the edge and the source vertex, let's say zero. The idea is to find the minimum distance of every other vertex from this source vertex. So in another video, I talked about Dijkstra's algorithm, which does the exact same thing. But Bellman Ford has two distinct advantages over, Dijk over Dijkstra's algorithm. Even though it's slower than Dijkstra's algorithm, it works in the cases when, when the weight of the edge is negative and it also finds negative weight cycles in the graph. So if there is a negative weight cycle in the graph, you cannot find the sh shortest distance because you can keep going through that cycle again and again and keep reducing the distance between two vertices. So next, let's see how Bellman Ford algorithm works. The idea of this algorithm is to go through all the edges of this graph one by one in some random order. So here I have one random order. It can be any random order. And then apply this relaxation formula on this edge uv. So for given edge uv going from u to v, if the distance to reach v from the source vertex is greater than the distance to reach u plus the weight of edge uv, then you set the distance of v to be distance of u plus weight of edge uv and parent of v to be u. And this makes sense. It means that you found another path, another shorter path to reach V via U. And we are going to store all this information in this map here. So the key in this map are verte uh, vertex indices and the value in the map is the distance. So, so the current minimum distance of these vertices from the source vertex and the parent is uh, telling us which vertex it should come through to get this minimum distance. So we have to repeat this entire process v minus one times. So we have to go through, go through all the edges and apply this relaxation v minus one times. And why v minus one time? I'm going to tell you at the end of this video. So next, let's apply this algorithm step by step on this graph here. So as I said before, we go through all the edges one by one v minus one times and apply the relaxation formula. So here we have total five vertices. So we're going to repeat this process four times. So let's start with edge three, four. So here uh, u is three and v is four. So the distance of v right now is infinity and distance of u right now is infinity. So this if condition will not be true. So this is this edge right now cannot do anything. So let's move on to another edge four, three, which is of, uh, uh, which is of weight one. So again, distance of four is infinity and distance of three is infinity. So this edge cannot do anything. So let's move on to another edge, two, four. Distance of two right now is infinity and distance of four right now is infinity. So again, this edge will not help in this if condition. So move on to the next edge, zero, two. So right now, distance of two is infinity, which is greater than distance of zero, which is zero, plus the weight of this edge, which is five. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to two, update its distance to be five, and say that it is coming from zero. So as you can see, as soon as we discovered this uh, edge, we know that two is at distance five if we traverse via this edge from source vertex zero. Next, we take vertex one, two. So distance of vertex one is infinity, and distance of vertex two is five. So this is never going to be the case, so we cannot do anything about this edge right now. Let's look at what edge zero to three. So distance of three right now is infinity, which is going to be greater than distance of zero plus the weight of this edge, eight. So let's update three. So eight, and we'll say that it's coming from zero. So again, what happened was we found and we found this edge and we found that three, if we take this edge, will be a distance eight from zero. And finally, zero to one. So again, distance of one is infinity, which is going to be greater than zero plus the weight of this edge. So this will become four. And we'll say that this is coming from zero. So we found this edge. So we repeated this process one time. We have to, again, we have to repeat the same process three more times. So let's start from here again. So distance of three is eight 
and uh, distance and plus the weight of this edge is 2 weight of this edge is 2 is less than whatever right now is with the 4 which is infinity yes so we are going to update this to be this uh, this uh, distance 10 and we'll say that 4 is coming from 3 so basically we already found the distance that 3 is a distance 8 and we found this edge so we know that Distance of 4, if we go via this route, will be 10, which is this 10. 8 plus 2, 10. So, what about 4, 3? So, distance of 4 is 10 and distance of 3 is 8. So, that if condition will not be true. So, let's pick next edge, 2, 4. So, distance of 2 is 5 plus the weight of this edge is 4 is less than the current distance uh, of uh, 4, so 10. So this is true. So what we're going to do is we're going to update this information to be 9 and we'll say that this is coming from 2. So basically what happened was we found one path to reach 4 which was a distance 10 but there is another path to reach 4 which is of distance 5 plus 4 9. So that's what we're doing. We're updating this distance and we are saying that now 4 is coming from 2 which is the parent here. Then uh, I'm going to pick 0 to 2. So 0 to 2 is not going to change anything because 2 is a distance 5. 1 to 2. So the distance to reach 1 is 4. And the weight of this edge is minus 3. And distance to reach 2 is 5. So this condition is going to be true. So what we're going to do is we're going to update this distance to be 1. And this also to be 1. So basically here, we found that this, this edge last time in the last iteration, but we found a shorter path to reach 2 going via 1. So we update the distance to be 1 for through that path and we are also saying that now we are reaching 2 via 1. And then 0 to 3 is 8 and it's already 8 so it's not going to give us a shorter distance and 0 to 1 is 4 and it's already 4 so it's not going to give a shorter distance. So we did our repetition two times. We need to do it two more times. So three to, let's pick 3 to 4 again. So distance to reach 3 is 8 plus distance to reach 4 is uh, distance to reach 4 uh, this weight of this edge is 2 and distance to reach 4 is 9. So this is not true. So this edge doesn't do anything yet in this case. What about 4 to 3? Distance to reach 4 is 9 plus the weight of this edge is 1. So again this is not true. So this edge doesn't help. 2 to 4. So the distance to reach 2 now is 1. So we can reach 2 in distance 1 plus the weight of this edge is 4 and 4 and this and the current distance to reach 4 is 9. So we find a better path, better uh, distance to reach 4. So we're going to update this to be 5. So last time when we did a relaxation and then the parent stays to be 2. So the last time we did relaxation, the distance to reach 2 was this 5. And with this 4, the value was 9. But then we found a shorter distance to reach 2 via 0. And that distance length is 1. So with that 1 and this 4, now we can reach 4 in total distance 5. What? Going via 2. Uh, so that was uh, 0 to, uh, that was 2 to 4. Then 0 to 2 is 5 and uh, we already found a very short distance. This is not going to help. 1 to 2 is minus 3 and we are already at the shortest distance with 2. So this is not going to change anything. 0 to 3 is not going to change anything and 0 to 1 is not going to change anything. So we're done with three repetition and we have to do one more repetition. So again starting, the distance to reach three is eight and plus the weight of this edge and distance to reach four is five. So this is not true, so this edge cannot help. Move on, moving on to the next edge, distance to reach four is five plus the weight of this edge is one and this is less than the current distance to reach three which is eight. So we found a shorter distance to reach 3 and that distance is 6. And now we are coming from this uh, vertex 4. So now we found a shorter distance to reach 3 
which instead of going from 0 to 3, we can come via this route here. And then 2 to 4 is not going to change anything, 0 to 2 is not going to change anything, and rest of the other edges are also not going to change anything. So we have done four repetitions of this, uh, this graph here, and we found the shortest distance, and we also found the, how to reach the, what is the path for the shortest distance. So after we are done doing V minus one repetitions, we do one more repetition with the same as edges. And if it reduces the distance even more, it means that there is a negative weight cycle in the graph. And I'm going to show another example to show that, show how that works. But in this case, going through this again is not going to change anything because there is no negative weight cycle in this graph. So finally, let's see how do we find what is the path to reach a vertex from the source vertex. So let's look at this example here. So uh, to reach three, we know that it's coming from four. So we know that three is coming from four. So then we go to four and jump here. And we know that four is coming from two. Then we go to two and we know that two is coming from one. And then we go to one and we know that one is coming from zero and zero is our source vertex. So this is the path to reach, this is the shortest path to reach three via zero. And let's see that. So zero to one is four, one to two is minus three, two to four is four, and three to four is one. So the total uh, distance here is five minus three, two plus four, six, which is this distance here. Let's quickly analyze the time complexity. So the time complexity of this algorithm will be O of V into E. So it's pretty clear we are going through all the, all the edges V minus one time and at the end we go one more time to see if there is negative weight cycle. So the time complexity is O of V into E. The space complexity is O of V. We can also use this algorithm to find all pair shortest paths. So basically the shortest path between all the pairs. All you have to do is repeat this process for considering all the other vertices as a source vertex. In that case, for all pair shortest paths, the time complexity will be O of V squared into E. But there are faster algorithms than this, like floyd warshall algorithm, which does it in O of V cube time. And here, in the worst case, E could be V squared. So this could really be O of V raised to four time. So next, let's, uh, let's try to understand why we are uh, repeating this process V minus one time. Let's try to understand why we need to repeat the process V minus one times. So if you look at this graph here, if the source vertex is one, to reach four, in the worst case, it'll take V minus one edges. So now, depending on the order in which the edges are discovered, it might take V minus one times to discover four. So let's look at this simple example. So if we try to relax three, four, it's not going to change anything because three has not been discovered and the, and the distance of three is infinity. Then we try to pick edge two, three, and it's also not going to change anything because two right now is also infinity. Then we go to one, two, and one is a distance, uh, uh, one is a distance zero with itself. So we discover two now. So this distance becomes two. So we discover two after first iteration, how far it is from one. Then we go back and repeat the same process. So three is still not discovered. So uh, we are not, we don't know what is this, uh, what is the minimum distance to reach four. And now we go to the second edge, two, three. Now that two has been discovered, we know that three is a distance, whatever is a two plus three, so five. And then one, two is, uh, two is already discovered. And then we go back to the top again. And this time now we know that how far three is from uh, one source vertex. So we know that four will be that distance plus two, so that is seven. So as you can see, it took me three iterations of going through these edges again and again to find out how far four is from the source vertex one. And because, the, and with the worst case here would be that since there are three different, th three, since there are V minus one edges from source vertex to the uh, last, to the last vertex, 
we have to repeat this process v minus one times. If we had if we had picked edges in this way, in that case we would have found the result in one iteration. So if this is infinity, this is infinity, this is infinity. So one to two. So we find how far two is from uh, one, which is two. Then we go to two to three. So this helps me relax three because uh, we already know distance of two is two plus three five, which is less than infinity. And then three to four, this will become seven. So if we had picked edges in this way, we could have found, we could have uh, solved it in one iteration. But in the worst case, it will take three iterations, which is v minus one, and which is why we are repeating this process v minus one times. Next, let's look at an example of how what happens if there is a negative weight cycle in this graph. So let's see how Bellman Ford deals with negative weight cycle. So here we have a cycle whose total weight is negative. 3 plus 2, 5, minus 6, minus 1. And here the source vertex is 0. So in here, all the vertices are at distance infinity while source vertex is at distance 0. And let's visit the edges in this way. So 0 to 1, this will relax 1 and this will the distance to reach 1 will become 1. Then we have 1 to 2, so the distance to reach 2 is infinity, which will be greater than distance to reach 1, which is 1, plus this 3, 4. And similarly, 3 will be relaxed, and this distance will become 6. And then 3 to 1, so the distance to reach 1 is 1 right now, and this coil is going to be greater than the current distance to reach 3, which is 6, plus the weight of this edge, so minus 6, so basically 0. So this distance becomes zero. So this is how the distances look after one iteration. We have two more iterations to do. So uh, going back again, this edge is not going to contribute anything. If we pick this edge, the distance to reach one is now zero, plus the weight of this edge is three, which is less than the current weight of four, so this becomes three. Then distance to reach two is three, plus the weight of this edge is 2, which is less than 6, so this becomes 5. And then distance to reach 3 is 5, plus the weight of this edge is minus 6, and this is less than 0, this is minus 1, so this becomes minus 1. So this is how it looks after second iteration. Let's do the third iteration. This is not going to help. Distance to reach uh, 2 is uh, minus 1, plus the weight of this edge, 3, it is less than what we have here, 3, so this becomes 2. Similarly, four, three, after we do this, relax this edge, this will become 4. And then finally, when we relax this edge, the distance to reach uh, 3 is 4, plus minus 6, the weight of this edge, and this is going to be less than minus 1, so this becomes minus 2. So after three iterations, this is how it looks like. So either this is the answer, or there is a negative weight edge in the cycle, negative weight cycle in the graph. And to find that, after v minus one iterations, we do one more final iteration. Let's do that. So, and if the weight, if the, if the distance continues to decrease, even in that iteration, it means that there is a negative weight cycle in the graph. So zero one doesn't help. 1 to 2. So distance to reach 1 is minus 2 plus the weight of it is this edge is 3 and this is less than the current distance to reach 2 which is 2. This is 1. So it means that weight continue, the distance continues to decrease. So at this point of time we can flag that there is a negative weight cycle and somehow deal with that situation. So this is how Bellman Ford detects negative weight cycle in the graph. In the vth iteration, after v minus 1 iteration, in the vth iteration, if the distance continues to decrease, it means that there is a negative weight cycle in the graph. So next, let's look at the code for this the algorithm. The function is get shortest path. It takes in the graph and the source vertex from which we want to find the shortest distance of every other vertex. We initialize two maps, distance and parent, for storing the minimum distance found so far from the source vertex and the parent of, that, of every vertex as we discussed before in the video. And then we are going to iterate through every vertex and then in this distance map, set the distance of that vertex from the source vertex initially to be infinity and set their parents to be null. And then we are going to go to the map and update the distance of source vertex to zero because it is at distance zero from itself. Then I'm going to get this V which is the total 
number of vertices in the graph and then we are going to repeatedly relax the edges v minus 1 times. So we go for i goes from 0 to v minus 1 and then we go through every edge in some uh, every edge of this graph in some random order get u the start of the edge v the end of the edge and then we relax the edge if distance of u plus the weight of the edge is less than distance of v then we update distance of v to be distance of u plus weight of the edge and set the parent of v to be u and as we discussed before we repeat this process v minus one times after that after doing this v minus one time we do this one more we do this relaxation of all the edges one more time and in this time if the distance of any vertex becomes less than what it has already till now then it means that there is a negative weight cycle in the graph and then we just throw this exception otherwise we just return this distance map which is storing the distance of every vertex from the source vertex so let's quickly run this code here so as expected uh, the graph is same as we discussed before as expected this is the output so this is the vertex and this is the distance of that vertex from the source vertex so this is all I have to talk about Bellman Ford algorithm. Please like this video, share this video, comment on this video, like my Facebook page and check out my GitHub link. Thanks again for watching this video.